Hey everybody, Chang Ron here, and I'm with my good friend Jonas. And Jonas was on the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, we really bonded through one major element, which is concussive injuries and traumatic brain injuries. Mm -hmm. So Jonas, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and tell us the story with that. <clears throat> yeah, hey guys. Thanks for uh, having me on. Mm -hmm. My name is Jonas Crafts. I was a tight end with the Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, we started talking about brain traumas. And what, when I met you, what, three, four years ago now? Yep. Yep. And, you know, my dad played professional football as well and uh, with the Denver Broncos. And about... Eight years ago now, my dad kind of just went berserk. One, one week, it, there was just, mm. stuff wasn't right. Mm. It wasn't adding up. My mom's calling me, she's like, hey, your dad stood outside the shower for 45 minutes while I was washing my hair. The next day, my dad gets a big legal pad and he's writing, trying to write my mom a letter because he didn't know what to say. Mm. He couldn't complete a sentence. Everything was in capital letters, scratched out, capital letters scratched out. And she's like, your dad's acting really weird. And my dad was just a fun, funny guy. The next morning, it's 5 a.m.-ish, my phone starts vibrating. I reach over, I look, and I see mom and dad, and I kind of just, I turn it off because I'm halfway asleep. What well, calls again? And at that point in time, I'm like, oh crap, why are they calling right now? Mm. So I answer it, my mom's bawling, crying. I'm like, okay, something's wrong. She goes, your dad told me to get out of the house before he hurts me. I said, okay, where are you going? She goes, I'm going to your sister's. I was like, I'll meet you there, but call an ambulance, call somebody. Obviously, something's not right. Mm. <clears throat> Me and my mom, my sisters, we go to the house. We go to my mom's house. Finally, as we pull up, we see the ambulance. We see fire department out there. And I said, hey, who's in charge? It's my dad. The, the chief came over and he goes, well, <clears throat> here's what happened. You know, we knocked on the door. We got the call for distress from your mom. We knocked on the door. When your dad answered the door, he had a knife in one hand, a bottle of tequila in the other. But as soon as he saw us, he dropped them both. So we knew it was a cry for help. They had him, they, they kind of cuffed him, so he was in the back of an ambulance when I pulled up, and it's just, if you've ever been concussed, you know what it looks like. I mean, he's looking 20 yards past you. You know, he, he's not focused on you, he's focused 20 yards past, and he's just shaking, he's, he sees me, and that, that's, that's all he can do is kind of hold my hand, and he's just shaking, and he just looks scared as all get out. Well, did you know what was happening at the time? Absolutely or? not. No clue. I mean, again, this is eight years ago. I think CTE kind of just came out, you know, Junior sales maybe a couple years before that. Yeah. And, this wasn't something that we knew. I mean, my dad was 70 or 69 at the time. Yeah. You know, and so for, he was relatively young and it's like, what the heck is going on? So what was going through your head at that particular time? Gosh, it's just, it, you know, what is this? How, how do we fix it? How did it happen right. as well? I mean, it was like, how did this happen and how do we fix it? And that, again, I, he was young enough that I was like, oh, he'll be fine. You know, and that, that's what I'm kind of thinking. I'm like, okay, something is wrong. So, you know, we take him over, get him checked out. And sure enough, the doc, you know, as they did, uh, I believe it was a CAT scan or something. They said, yeah, you know, they, he has vascular dementia. Okay. All the minute arteries leading up to the back of the brain had hardened and died off. We in the football realm call that more than likely CTE, mm -hmm. right? You, couldn't, you can't necessarily diagnose it unless you cut the actual brain open and, right. and see everything. But we knew that the brain wasn't getting the oxygen, wasn't getting the blood flow that it needed and had those minute arteries leading up to the brain harden and pretty much shut off. When the, the rest of his plumbing, his heart, his cholesterol, his blood pressure, everything, the doctor goes, he's 35 years old. Mm -hmm. He's not a 70 year old guy, he's 35 years old. So Just by looking at the clean arteries correct. and the heart, okay. They said, yeah, all the plumbing and, and electrical right. is great here, why isn't it going up to the brain? So vascular dementia mostly is people with other vascular issues like in the heart and the carotid arteries, mm -hmm. but his was clean. Clean as can be. So obviously something was causing it that's outside of the standard of norm, mm -hmm. which we now know, you know, eight years later, that is one of the hallmarks of tr chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. And so how long was it after that, that you thought, hey, maybe this is from like repetitive trauma. Pretty much as soon as they told us that the next day, we said, we know what it's from. Cause when he goes, the oh, arteries are clean, you know, it was like, okay, we I know see. it's from, it's I from see. pounding heads. And if you knew my dad, when I was getting recruited into college, yeah, my dad, cause he played ball. He was a coach also. So, you know, growing up, all his friends were coaches of teams. Right. So me getting recruited, half of those coaches would come and go, Jonas, if you're, if you're a tenth as mean as your daddy, you're going to be a hell of a ball player. 
Mm. My dad was just that mean. Mm. My dad was just, you know, there was no quit. There was no stop. Right. And so, you know, to have that, and it's like, man, just to know how he played. He played all out. And that, that's how we play as professional athletes. It's I, all or nothing. Yeah. Rarely is it, oh, let me protect myself. Now I think we're kind of getting to that realm of, should I make that extra hit or should I go out of bounds? Mm -hmm. You know, and so as we see that, I go, okay, we knew exactly what this was from just because he was an all-in type of guy. Did, did, did it make you fearful for yourself if you were going to go under <clears throat> the same fate? So, funny enough, or ironically enough, he gets sick in October yeah. of 2011. Uh-huh. I meet with one of the doctors because I was doing diabetic nutrition in San Antonio. Uh, I meet with one of the doctors in December of 2011. Mm. And that's when he goes, Jonas, you know so much, you know so, so many people. Why don't you open up a medical clinic? I'll be your medical director. He tells me that in December of 2011, I open up my medical clinic in March of 2012. And I did that. It was almost like an op because I was scared. And I was like, hold on. Some right. of these pieces to the puzzle are falling in place. How do I... I always wanted to be like my dad, but how do I not end up like my dad? And so that was, to me, was like, hey, how can I fix this? I'm young enough, I was 30 years old, 31 years old. I said, how do I fix this so that way I don't end up in his shoes? Right. And I was kind of looking for answers the whole way of saying, hey, I'm young enough. My brain, I believe, is still pliable enough that I can create that neurogenesis within the brain right. so I don't end up another CTE victim from the NFL. Right, right. And so, when you open that up, and obviously now, now it's, that's a very personal reason why you open that mm -hmm. up, right? And so, what what is your mission now when it comes to CTE? Oh, my mission, <clears throat> gosh, it's it's educate those that have already played because again, our brains are still good as long as they're still good, and that's what you know we saw with with the study. Educate the former athletes because right. the former athletes are going to talk to the current athletes. And the current athletes are going to talk to the future athletes, meaning high school, middle school, right. peewee football. These guys are still hitting hard. And as they're growing, I believe, I mean, from the eight, eight year olds to the 18 year olds, that's when the brain is really growing robust. And it's going, okay, you know what? We could talk about helmets all day long. We could talk about, you know, safety and hitting up. There's still going to be accidents. If you look at, you know, Tua Tagovailoa, you know, he gets thrown down. He didn't get hit, he right. got thrown down. Right. Hitting a human. There's a little bit of pliability there. Hitting the ground, that thing doesn't move. Mm. And that's what rattles the brain. And so we go, you can have all the science, but what if we could feed the brain every time after we play? You know, and, and what do us athletes get after uh, a football game? It's always simple carbohydrates, pizzas, spaghetti, wings. And what do we like to do? We like to celebrate. What else do we put? Alcohol. So now you go, okay, I'm having alcohol, I'm having simple carbs. Are any of those good for the brain? No. no. So this to me is a big education piece for the universities, for the school districts. Even for, high school. High school yeah, yeah, the school districts. Yeah. You know, so that way they can start going, hey, you know what? We know that you know, on average there's about 70 to 80 offensive plays. So every time, if I'm a lineman, if I'm a tight end, which I was, you know, out of those 70 plays, I'm probably hitting somebody at least 60. Just during the game, not mm. to mention during the, the daily week of practice. Right. You we're buttoned up, we're buttoned up, you're taking steps so that way you can have it. I would say minimum 100 times a day, our brains are doing this. Mm. What are we doing to help feed and renourish the brain after, right? As athletes, we go and work out at the gym. Well, you can talk to every athlete. They're more than likely going to take a pre workout, they're more than likely going to have a protein, some amino acids, everything so that way we can help the muscle, right? So when we go to the gym, we're creating chaos in the muscle. But we utilize all those supplements so that way we can help repair the body. Okay, now if we're creating chaos in the brain, can we utilize nutrients just like that, like some nootropics, some CBDs, some good things to help the brain right. heal itself just mm -hmm. like the muscles can heal themselves? Yeah, and the answer is yes. Correct. <laughs> and so uh, let's talk about the study. And, and the study that we're referring to is, is one that um, I was part of the publication. Mm -hmm where um, enter cannabinoids. So cannabinoids in form of CBD and other forms of cannabinoids, what did it really do to people with multiple hits in the head? And so the study uh, was published in a journal called Neuroregulation. And uh, that is a beautiful story of getting 54 former professional um, NFL players uh, into rooms and actually scanning their brain. Mm -hmm. 
uh, using something called the quantitative EEG analysis called a BrainView NeuroScan Pro. That's the name of the device. And what we did is we wanted to see how, what the brains actually did looking at the brain patterns before and after uh, cannabinoids, uh, specifically this formulation <coughs> called Focus from Prima Body. And so this is a THC-free version, which means there's zero THC in it. Uh, and what I really wanted to know is because there hasn't really been any studies done on, on THC formulations of what it actually does to the brain and does it develop resilience? And the answer is yes. So the, the, the actual the studies show that there's actually improved resilience, improved reaction time, mm -hmm. right? And improved, able for, uh, improved uh, the ability for the brain to categorize things as well. And, and this is just a few minutes um, after taking cannabinoids. So this is sort of a landmark thing. And so when that got published, what did the, what did the NFL do? <laughs> they, their, their antennas perked up, right? Yeah, the antennas perked up. Well, it, I think it was, it was they, they made sure we had it published because at the beginning it was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Now that you published it, now they're going, hey, hey, hey. Right. You guys are actually doing something. Right, right. And so we come to a point in time where, you know, we know that stuff like um, cannabinoids and stuff like that can potentially improve the brain in some way. This is the first study that's actually showing that there's, there's a quantitative improvements, right? We're turning words into numbers. Instead of people saying, I kind of feel better, now we're saying that you're this much percent better mm -hmm. in this statistical, uh, uh, statistical analysis saying that this is statistically significant. Measure it, yeah. So, you know, now, now, we're, now we're in a very different world. We're in a world where <clears throat> chronic traumatic encephalopathy is all over the news. Mm -hmm. We're in a world where there's a recognition by uh, very big um, uh, professional companies from the NFL to World Cup. We recognize that it's an actual thing. Where do you, what do you wish the world would know in the next five years about CTE? What do I wish for them to know? I wish for them to know how to stop it before it happens. Because yeah. if we could get science right. there, now we can go play without having to worry about, am I gonna be able to walk, you know, 20 years, 30 years from now? Right. You know, because that, that's the scary part. I mean, to have my dad do what he did, and he just, it was a downhill slope for two years after. I said, he was a shell of a man. And I didn't like seeing my dad like that, but it was just, it was not getting better. It was only getting worse. And there was really nothing that we could do about it. So my whole wish is that, can we prevent anything like that from happening? So that way nobody has to be in my shoes or anybody's shoes that has passive CTE. Uh, to see that happen to a family member. How could we s completely stop that if we could? Yeah. You know, the, I think a lot of answers are really going to come in the next few years. Yeah. And I think that the world has an understanding now there's modifiable risk factors as well. Um, and there are even genetics that um, people are now understanding as a risk factor. For example, there's a, the there's something called the APOE4, which is called the Alzheimer's gene. In reality, it just means the brain can create more inflammation, mm -hmm. but CTE can develop because of that as well. I have one of the one of the copies of that gene, and I have my own traumatic experiences with concussions as well. And so we know that now there's other things like presenilin one, presenilin two, and all these different things that we're looking at the world of Alzheimer's disease. But we're translating that to chronic traumatic encephalopathy mm -hmm. as well. And that's the beauty of where we're going really in the next five years. Nice. And I think that if the people are educated and understand those risk factors and even get genetic tests beforehand, mm -hmm. right? Get a baseline. Yeah, baseline. Then I can, I can discuss with my daughters whether or not they should really go into soccer, right? Uh, by the way, soccer is a really, really girls' soccer has a extremely high rates of mm -hmm. concussions right after boys' football. football yeah. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, the impact is actually identical to to football uh, in, in the soccer uh, arena. So we, so you know, as a father of, of three girls, and you know, and making decisions based on this, I think all those things are really necessary to understand. Like, what are my risk factors, and is it really worth it as well? Right. And what do you think, and, and going back to the topic of cannabinoids and, and CBD, what do you think is going to be the friction point? Well, I, let me reword that. What do you think it's going to take for people to start realizing 
that stuff like diet and uh, oh. CBD uh, <laughs> or you know other things and, and physical activity, what do you think is going to take them to understand that these are the actual things that we should be doing? I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us that has played before. Yes. I think it's going to take the coaches, the trainers, because yeah. I, I think science is getting better, right? We're always getting bigger, faster, stronger. Right. So if the science is getting good on that realm, I think we need to get the science good on the preventative realm as well for the brains. And once once kids start doing that, the coaches are going to talk to the parents. The parents are going to talk to the kids. That's I, I think that is how we do a mainstay. They can't go talk to their family practice doc per se. You know, he might not know everything about what we're doing with this, but it's the guys that do it. It's, it's having that firsthand experience. I mean, yeah. I think I told you, that's when I... I just felt like my brain opened up. The first two weeks I was taking focus, I was like, okay, I, I could notice my knees, I could notice my joints were feeling better. But it took about a month and I was like, whoa, everything opened for my brain for the most part. And I would talk to my friends, they're going, oh, Jonas, you're just trying to sell me a bottle of oil. I said, I don't, I, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I know you've had more concussions than <laughs> I have. Yeah. And I know how your yeah. life is. I've talked to your wife, I've talked to your kids, and they're saying that, they don't even know who you are today. And so as, as they get on these products, they're going, Jonas, thank you. I'm getting the phone calls. I'm getting the text messages. Jonas, thank you. You know, he, he won't ever listen to us, but he listens to you. And I think it's it's us guys and it's that peer, peer-to-peer talking and, and educating that really needs to take place now. So that way we can go talk to the coaches. We can go talk to the trainers. We can go talk to the strength conditioning coaches. So that way we can get a better protocol. Again, starting from the NFL, college, high school, down to Pee Wee football. Right. And, and what was so powerful for me, um, being a private investigator on that study, or principal investigator on the study, was that I, I've never really s- spoken to large groups of people playing professional football before. Um, I have one-on-ones. I have friends that's been in the NFL, yourself, uh, a few other ones as well. But when everyone got into a group, it was such so powerful because they were talking about symptoms, mm-hmm. but they never told anybody. Yeah. And I'm just like a Safe fly place. on the wall. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> like, this reminds me of the, the military veteran PTSD group we used to hold in, in my office back in the day. And it's like you, you, we're, we're starting to share stories. Uh, and, and people think, and people are asking me, well, is this, is this is normal for me to like space out a little bit and then come back into the conversation? I'm like, well, no, <laughs> it's not, you know, and it can really affect relationships oh, and it has re- affected relationship quite a bit. It can create addictive tendencies, right? It, and it can create so much like over excitation, especially, you know, after they retire from the NFL that they're, they're going down the same road, but they think that, oh, maybe it's just me, right? And so seeing those symptoms uh, pop up and having people talk about it is exceptionally important. So what are the symptoms? Uh, panic attacks for no reason. One of the biggest things that people talked about during, during the study, right? Uh, another one is being really triggered with anxiety, mm. really terrible sleep, okay? Or if sometimes they have too much sleep and they wake up and they still feel like a bus hit them in the face, mm-hmm. right? So these are just things that are... That, that people don't talk about because they, they think that this it's a normal thing, but it's not a normal thing. And if you're listening to this and you've had concussions yourself, you kind of understand, you know, after these, these injuries, it's not necessarily uh, easy to recover from, but they're modifiable risk factors, right? And so last question that, that I would like for you to, 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 to talk about is what have you learned maybe in the last year or two that you wish you knew when you were playing football? Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> well, it's funny, I, I kind of just want to piggyback on what you said earlier, because sure. as you just started talking about all those things, it just made me think of who I was five years ago. Wow. Just that reactive person, just irritable for no reason. Mm. Something could happen and I just <laughs> go off. Yeah. But it's like, you know, in football, we're trained to do that almost. And I was like, no, no, I was, I would tell my staff, like, no, this is how I respond. Just get it. And once I started getting this in my body, it was like, you, just, you brought back memories from literally five years ago wow. on how I used to act and react and feel. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I did. Like, I don't, I don't like that. I didn't like who I was. I remember, God, I'll just, I'll, I'll say this. I was successful in my business. I was making more money in my business than I did in the NFL. 
And I just remember I was depressed. I remember literally sitting on the floor of my condo on the 25th floor overlooking San Antonio. I'm just going, why do I have all this? Mm. This is this is so stupid. It's not nothing makes me happy right now. Yeah. And it was the weirdest feeling because I literally had everything that you would want. Mm. The watches, the cars, the condo, the the lifestyle. And I'm sitting there depressed as hell. Mm. And I did I did not like that. And so now as as we move on forward, what, that last question was what would I like to see come to fruition? Well, what did you what did what do you Wish you knew when you were playing football back in the day. That, that there was a way to prevent this. There's a way to that, prevent this. There was, that, there, there was a right way. Let me say this. There was a right way to feed my brain after it went through chaos. There it goes. The simplicity of that. Yeah. So even though a lot of this is preventable, um, even if you do have symptoms of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, there's, it's never too late. You know, you can turn it around like Jonas did a few years ago. And that's, that's what's the most important thing. Well, Jonas, thank you so much yes, for sir. being vulnerable and talking to me. Uh, always a good friend. I appreciate you. Thank you for all you've done for us and, and what we're doing so that we can go out and share this with the rest of the, the world, including us athletes. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Thank you.